Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. So, as you know, the Classic Beta started up a few weeks ago. I was about two weeks late getting in, but I did finally get there, and I've been playing it quite a bit. And I thought I'd give you my impressions on it really quickly here. I've been ranting about this game for years, so it's probably video worthy to talk about it now that I'm actually playing it, right? Well, to sum it up, I like it. I know, shocking, right? It's honestly everything I imagined it to be though, and in fact, I like it enough that it's brought me out of a four year hiatus from streaming. Ever since I started the YouTube channel, I've stopped streaming for a few reasons, but a big one was because there weren't really any games that I felt passionate enough to actually livestream. Until now. So please excuse the plug here, but my channel is at twitch.tv forward slash madseasonshow if you want to come and say hi. I stream most days, typically around noon or in the morning. So what do I think of the beta? Well I think first I should give you an idea of my background with the game, of when I started and what I've done, and so on to give you some perspective of my experience with it. Well I started the game in March of 2005. I came from another MMO called Star Wars Galaxies, and I was one of the last holdouts of my group of friends, and the reason I switched was because all of my friends quit pretty much. They migrated to this new hit MMO called World of Warcraft by Blizzard Entertainment where you hack and slash away at your enemies, cast spells, have erotic roleplay sessions with female avatars that are most definitely all males, so right up my alley basically. I ended up finally biting the bullet and actually I didn't like it at first due to the cartoony graphics, but I stuck with it and I saw just how much the game had to offer. I ended up doing the typical stuff, I got into PvP quite a bit, Climaxing at rank 10, which is when things really started to get grindy with that old rank 14 system, and I got into a hardcore raiding guild, typically the top 3 for my realm, which was and still is Khadgar US. Specifically, we full cleared every raid, with the exception of Cthune and the optionals in AQ40, and a little less than half of the original Nextramus 40. I raided 5 days a week, around 4 to 5 hours a day, so really edging the demands of a full time job. But luckily I had no life, so it all worked out in a way I guess. And from there, I played off and on, bouncing between casual and hardcore. I kind of missed a lot of that progression rating in the Burning Crusade due to burnout, and Wrath was my last hurrah really with competitive rating, because that's when my guild pretty much dissolved and most of my friends quit, and I never again got that motivation to find a new guild. A big reason for that is I feel like the prime of the game had passed me ever since the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. But fast forward to today, with the upcoming release of Classic, that drive is back, full effing force. Pardon my French. Like I said, this game brought me out of a four year hiatus with streaming. I initially thought that I wouldn't play it that much if I got in the beta. Like eh, maybe just like level 5 or so, just to check it out. Nothing too crazy, right? Yeah, things may have gotten out of hand. Just a bit I'd say. And the reason for that is because, well, it's fun. And I wanted to break down one by one the main reasons why I think that. Obviously, with the beta being capped at level 40, we can't really get into the heavy stuff such as endgame rating or real competitive PvP. Although the low level meta has been surprisingly enjoyable for me. Probably because I'm a warlock and fear is just completely overpowered. But let's just start from the ground up and that would of course be the leveling. Something that I've claimed for years is that the leveling in the game used to be harder. Not just more time consuming, but also harder. Like I said, I ended up making a warlock in the beta, which is one of the easier classes to level in the game since you have a personal tank pretty much. But still, I can absolutely tell you that the difficulty is there, especially if you're solo. The mobs hit harder, you hit for less, elite quests are back and are unsolable for most classes in the game at the appropriate level. You'll pull 100 enemies because the aggro radius is bigger, and your gold is limited so you simply can't buy the best gear, and of course no things such as heirlooms or other modern conveniences that the current game has. The leveling will kick your butt if you're solo if you're not careful, and it of course also extends to dungeons. All that being said though, I don't think it's as hard as people thought it would be, and that's simply because people's measuring stick for the past 12 years have been private servers, or a foggy memory, or both. When the beta first launched, people were saying that the health regeneration is too quick, and that the elites don't hit hard enough, and etc etc, but so far, it's looking like these are things that were improperly tuned not by Blizzard, but rather the private servers, 
as Blizzard has been slowly testing these elites and whatnot with their original reference client and pulling numbers that were true to the original release. But still, the leveling can be difficult, and it's a good thing for the game. In my recent BFA review, when talking about Warfronts and how they're nearly impossible to lose, I brought up the point that in a video game, if there's no real challenge in something, it's no longer fun. If there aren't really any obstacles to overcome, that activity just becomes a chore to slog your way through to get to that ultimate endgame reward. It's certainly the case for Warfronts, and I also think for leveling in the current game. I mean, just look at the cash shop. You can pay to skip the leveling. Players should never feel like they should pay to skip anything in your game. I mean, there will always be people who will want that, even if it's perfect, but if the demand is big enough to warrant a cash shop method to skip through the leveling in your game, it really says a lot about the state that it's in. In the beta, I once more feel engaged in the leveling. I've made it a point to level by myself as much as I can. I only do quests in a group if I'm invited, and if I feel like I can solo them, I try to solo them. For the most part, at least. I also don't want to go out of my way to avoid people, but I don't accept help from overleveled players, because I've made an effort to gauge the difficulty of the leveling in the game, as you all would if you were playing. And that's not a statement on those who accept help, by the way. You can do what you want, I really don't care. But you have to think about what you pull, where you pull it, if there are any patrols around, what order to do the quests, and where to do them, because there aren't any blips on your map. You actually have to read them back then, remember? So it's like finding hidden quests, or hard to find quests. It feels like an adventure. I ended up forming a group for this orc outpost in Red Ridge. There are a handful of elite quests here, and you have to push through a small army of orcs to get them done. Just going in all willy-nilly didn't really work out as you can see. We died, a lot, but we regrouped and said, Come on, let's get serious. We went room by room, marking kill orders, sheeping mobs, dodging patrols, and slowly but surely, we made our way to our final room, where the big boss awaited us. A four-pack with a red no less. We sheeped one, I spam feared one, pet tanked as much as possible, and we got skulled down, then X, then the big one, and finally we cleared the room to get the quest done for everyone. It was actually pretty intense, and it was more rewarding than any raid boss I've killed throughout all of BFA, this level 20-ish group quest. And here's another example for you. I later got a quest to go into this tower, but I didn't have a group. I was solo, so I had to get clever. The goal was to get this little urn at the very top, but I didn't know where it was, so I had to scout it out with my Eye of Kilrog. Okay, there it is, but holy crap, there's like a thousand orcs along the way. Okay, let me soul stone up, make a health stone, send the pet into tank, and I'll fear what I can. Oh crap, the void walker's about to die. Let me sacrifice him for an absorb shield, then health stone, potion, and make it up as far as I can go. Okay, but now what? We have two different patrols that'll 100% aggro if I just pop up here. So let me wait a bit and see their pattern to try and time it to see if I can resurrect safely, and then summon the void walker again. Send them up to get everyone's attention, grab the quest, and make a clean getaway. I felt like James Bond running away from some power plant exploding or something. This is what I've been ranting about for the past four years. Moments like this. Quests that are difficult enough to engage you, and challenges that require you to think hard and pull out every trick in the book, and I'm so glad that it's as I remember. It really immerses you into the world that much more, and into your character. So let's talk about that a bit more. I do feel that overall, due to the increased difficulty of the leveling, that I do care more about my character. Every level, I'm like, cool, a little bit stronger. Let me see what spells I can train, or let me put in my talent point. This is of course when we had the old talent trees, where you got one more point per level, and you had many more nodes to experiment with. The common criticism with this system is that there really isn't any choice, and at the max level, there are only a couple of viable builds. While this is true to some extent, this argument is really indicative of that big problem that I mentioned earlier, and that's people only take the end game into consideration. We have 60 levels of character progression, and when you slowly but surely increase in power level by level, and you're combining that with stuff such as spell training, you really get invested with your character, which is what MMORPGs are all about, right? It's that character development, and I think that people only taking that endgame into consideration is the perfect example of one of the problems that the current game faces. 
especially with level scaling. I also brought this up in my BFA video, but as you level now, mobs skill with you, and you don't get new talents nor new spells, and with that scaling, you have to ask yourself the question, what's the actual point of the leveling? It's just an exercise, and it goes against anything resembling an RPG. For Classic though, the leveling to me feels like a journey and not an obstacle. And keep in mind that this is in spite of it being a beta. This character and all of my progress will be deleted, but yet here I am building my best in slot lists and planning out my tune because I actually care about his gear. And I care about his gear because I'm invested into that character development. I've gotten more excited about level 20 blue items than I have getting some ultra mega titan forged socketed items from heroic raiding because it feels more rewarding to me. I know that even for this low level meta, okay this is the best item I can get. I don't have to farm it 40 times hoping for a titan forged socket proc. I feel that growth in power and I want better gear so I can do better in pvp or duels or better at running dungeons or whatever, which leads me into the community section of this video. Another thing I've been ranting about for years is the community in Classic. If you watched some of my older videos, if I had to pick the most important thing about the game, it would have to be the community aspect, and this too is something that I feel is very strong even in the beta. Now there is layering, and it does have its problems, more on that later, but since there isn't any cross from zoning, many times I've run into the same people over and over while leveling. Like I did that elite orc quest with this group of people, and hey, look, there he is again. I remember this guy, let me hook him up with a hellstone, and maybe he'll run stockades with me soon, or maybe he'll group up for this quest. It's a hard thing to put in words, let alone prove, when people can't actually experience it. It's something that you really have to experience yourself to fully understand it, I think. Back then, this is how I met my friends and joined my raiding guild. I started just joining my one friend from Star Wars. Through him, I met two more guys named Zarg and Maver, two people that I still play with today, and I made friends with them, and eventually we joined a raiding guild named Archaic where I made many more friends. To me, it felt more organic and natural back then, whereas today, I feel like you have to go out of your way to make friends with people or to find a raiding guild. With cross realm zoning, assuring that you never see the same person twice, dungeon finder conveniently teleporting everyone so you don't have to fight to the dungeon together, and the dungeons themselves being so face rolled to the point where no one even needs to speak, mob tagging sharing so there's no real reason to ever group up with anyone, and it goes on and on. I feel like there are so many hurdles today between players that you really have to go out of your way and force things to make friends, and to go through that progression of joining a guild and doing all of that endgame stuff. Or just random silly events in general. Here I joined a raid to kill Dr. Weevil on Alka's Island in Theramore. He was tied to the old scepter quest, and I had no reason to do it. I had nothing to gain, and it didn't really turn out the best, but you know what? I did it because it was fun. You can attribute a lot of this to just being bored at level 30 certainly, but I think a big part of it comes from the community and just doing interesting things. In regards to stuff like world PvP, today players are kind of forced together through world objectives for some ultimate reward, whereas back then I feel like people just did it more for the fun of it. Like I said, it all feels so much more organic and player driven. Like look at that horde scum killing that turtle. Those are my turtles, damn it. Let's make turtle soup out of them. I don't care about the honor or even the turtles, I just want him to know that I'm better. Or stepping outside of PvP, just being able to say that the alliance on your server was the first to clear Scarlet Monastery Cathedral, that sort of stuff. But for our last topic here, I'd like to briefly mention the gameplay. I have a lot to say about this, but I feel like I should hold off because at the end of the day we're still capped out at level 40. Like, can you really bring up anything substantial in regards to gameplay when we've seen such a small fraction of the game? At its bare bones though, the gameplay to me feels just as good as ever. I feel that even at this level, each class has such a defined and unique playstyle, and everyone has their own little roles to fill. Warlocks of course have summons, health stones, and soul stones for dungeon wipes, and I also like their curse that makes it so enemies don't run away. Mages are the kings of control, and druids are the most mobile, and paladins are good support classes with nice buffs, and incidentally are the best in PvP since their kit consists of judgment, stun, and seal of command. 
Hey, just saying, it's true, isn't it? It's the era before every class had every tool at their disposal. Not everyone has a sprint, not everyone has a self heals, nor an immunity button, or a super nimble, and so on. Again, you can't go too crazy with this because we're still low level, but I think it will be something that translates to the level 60 endgame. I think another major issue with the game today is that hyperbalance. Everyone must have answers for everything. It seems like these days, Blizzard balances the game as if it's an FPS rather than an MMO. I think that they sacrifice a lot of uniqueness and identity with these classes to try and reach that hyperbalance, which ultimately is unattainable in PvE and PvP by the way. I mean, just look at the recent Mythic rating progression where like 80% of the DPS are Affliction Warlocks. Hey, at least in Classic, he had a mix of Warriors, Rogues, Mages, and Warlocks as the top DPSers. And why is that? Well, it's because they're more than just a DPS number to the raid. Warlocks bring essential debuffs, soul stones, and summons, and warriors can off-tank, so they're always handy to have around, and mages have water, and they're dampen and amplify magic, among other handy spells, and rogues to a lesser extent have some group play viability through their poisons, or trap disarms in the Blackwing Lair. And druids, although they weren't the best healers, were the only ones who could battle res, which was crucial due to how spiky and unpredictable damage was back then. And also, a lot of people forget about their Innervate spell, which was equally as crucial. Over the years, they either took out, removed, or quote balanced a lot of the unique perks that these classes have, either directly by straight up removing them, or indirectly by just making them irrelevant. And what I mean by that is, for example, druids still have their battle res of course, but death knights and warlocks, and anyone with engineer can also battle res now. Warlocks can still summon, but now there are summoning stones, and more convenient traveling options in general, and mages can still make food, but only healers really need it now, since mana is such a non-issue for everyone else. And again, it's all for this unobtainable hyperbalance. What's this? Shamans can buff their party members with Wind Fury, or drop totems that cleanse afflictions off of them? Well, we don't want people to feel the need to bring shamans, so remove everything. It's pretty funny for how much people bash the balance of Classic that the DPS roster is somehow more diverse 15 years prior, and that's because DPSers are more than just a number. They bring other cool perks to the table, or at least they used to. I think combined with the fact that these classes being much more niche in general and not having answers for everything makes for a more rewarding and interesting time in both PvE and PvP. And when you have these core concepts operating at a good efficiency, it makes people actually care about most other things in the game. I won't lie and say that the balance is flawless. I mean, warriors are unequivocally the best tanks, and priests the best healers, and who really wants a raid filled with balanced druids? I'm just saying that there's value in the classes having their own little niches and roles to fill. It's one of the reasons why I liked Wrath so much, is because I think that's when the game had a good mix of having a decent balance between the classes, and at the same time, we still had the distinction between them, and not everyone had answers for everything. Just talking about it, or reading about it is enough, but actually playing it gives you a much clearer perspective of things I think, and even if you think that you'll have no interest in Classic at all, I say at least give it a shot. Give it until level 10 or 20, and see if you pick up on what I'm saying here. So, all of this is to say, I have quite a high opinion of the game so far. I think Blizzard has done a really good job, and I feel that Classic will be extremely successful, so much so that I think it may make them stop for a moment and say that, alright, what can we adopt from Classic into current to recapture that magic so to speak? Hey, a guy can dream, can't he? And on that note, I'll still play current. I always maintain that I enjoy it for what it is. I think it has a lot of flaws, and while I'm mainly focusing on classic right now, I think I'll always have that itch for current if I feel like doing a Mythic Plus run or something, or a new raid, or expansion comes out. I will be checking out 8.2 when it drops, and my fingers are crossed that it fixes some of the problems that I have with the current game particularly with the Azerite system, which I feel has many issues. And hey, I take a return to raid sets, although there's a pretty fat chance of that happening. There are some caveats here and there. I think that layering is still an issue. There have been instances of players getting layered mid-combat, or relogging to resource nodes, and so on. Now, will it be fixed for release? 
Well, I hope so, because if you're able to relog into a fresh thorium vein every time, it's gonna be a big problem. I said that in a recent video, I think that layering should be in at one week max because that's before people get to the high level stuff such as Black Lotus and Thorium. If it's completely screwed up even at release, which has a high chance of happening by the way, at least we can say that, ah well, at least it got taken out before things really got screwed up. I do have a lot of trust in Blizzard, but I can definitely see them messing up this layering. So I think if it's a cutoff point before it can really be exploited hardcore, that would be the best failsafe and a good middle ground. Other than that though, I'm pretty excited and I'm not alone. I'll see you in the next video or the next stream because again, I'm back to streaming now. You can find me on Twitch at the same username, but wherever you may find me, I hope that you found the video interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.